What's up y'all? Today we're machining a propeller using a three quarter inch core five end mill from Kinemetal. And be sure to stick around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I program this part in MasterCAD. And if you like our content, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. There are several ways we could have went about roughing the outside shape of this part. We could have easily put it in a lathe and roughed it faster than what we are doing here, but that would have added an additional setup and tied up another machine, and since we only have one part to make, then the additional setup time alone would have increased our total processing time for this job. MasterCam offers several ways to rough a part like this, including a new tool path called Blade Expert. But I'm using a five flute tool for roughing this part, which is not ideal for slotting. So I chose a different approach, which allowed me to rough between the fins using a dynamic tool path instead. Always remember, there's more than one way to do something. And in the end, you need to choose the method that works for you and choose the correct tooling for that method. Using this strategy does require us to add an extra tool path to clean up the excess stock left on the walls of the blades. But this is easily taken care of with a few clicks using a swarf tool path. So after we get the top of the part faced, we've got a lot of material to remove off this outside profile. So the first thing we want to do in creating this tool path is create some surfaces that we want to drive. So I've created these revolved surfaces that you can see matches the OD of the part. These surfaces represent everything I want to cut all the way to this back shoulder. We're going to be using unified multi-axis tool path. So we go into our parameters. After we set the tool up, go to cut pattern. You can see that I'm using two guide curves to drive this tool path. The first guide curve is going to be the front radius right here. This is where I want to start my cut. Hit OK. The second drive curve is the back where I want to stop. Now I could have done this whole tool path in one go, where I come from the front all the way down the back, but I personally don't like to plunge down into the material with the bottom of the tool. So what I'm going to do is break this tool path up. I'm going to first rough all the way to the top here. And then we're going to copy it and make another tool path where we start at the bottom and work our way back to the top. And for our machining geometries, we're going to select these three surfaces, the ones that we want to cut. So we hit end selection. I'm gonna leave 25 thousandths on the top of this. We're gonna use 75 thousand step over and we wanna make sure that we're using a spiral method. I don't want the tool to come on and off the part. Next, we're gonna to go to tool axis control tab. We're gonna put a small one degree lead angle on our tool. This is gonna get the tool up on the front cutting edge. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna copy this tool path. I've already copied it here. If you go back into the parameters, in the cut pattern, you'll notice that this first guide curve, I've changed it from, instead of using the front, I'm now using the back side. Hit OK, and the second curve is still the same curve that we used on the front, on the first tool path. Our machining geometries, we're gonna to change to use this back radius. In selection, everything else is going to stay the same. We hit OK. Now, if you simulate this tool path, you'll notice that we start from the back and work our way to the top. This is gonna keep that tool from digging in on the bottom. Now that the outside profile is rough, now we can go in and start roughing the hub and the fins. To rough out the hub and the fins, we could have done this several different ways, including a new tool path that MasterCam come out with called Blade Expert. You can rough and finish with this tool path. But instead of using this, we're gonna use multi-axis pocketing. So I've already have a tool path here. So we go in the parameters, we set up our tool, and in cut pattern, 
for machining geometries, I'm going to select this from this blade to this side, including the floor. This is everything that I want to cut. We hit end selection, and for floor geometries, we simply pick the floor of the hub. End selection, I'm going to leave 25 thousandths on the walls and 15 on the floor. Roughing, dynamic strategy, we're going to be doing a step over of 75. And very important here in the area, we're going to use a containment. So if we click on this, you can see that what I've done is I've created curves around the outside profile of these fins. And I want my tool to drop down here where there's no material and work its way in. That way I don't have to plunge or helix down inside of material. So I've extended the curve out far enough to where I know my tool will be able to drop inside of here. I want the tool to be able to extend out past the part so I've extended my curves out far enough to where I know that the tool can reach all the material. So now that we have a containment chain, we're going to hit Generate, and there's our pocket. Instead of making three pocketing tool paths where we have to select all of the geometry in every one, what we can do is simply go to the Tool Paths page and do Tool Path Transform. So if we open up the parameters for this transform, you can see that I've selected the pocketing operation. And I'm going to rotate. So if we go to Rotate tab, I'm doing two copies at 120 degrees apart. We hit OK. And there is our new operations. Now this tool path keeps the tool normal to the floor so that we're going to have some excess stock on these walls. So what we need to do is come in with a swarf machining tool path and clean up the excess stock. Now if I go into this tool path, you'll see that for swarf geometries, we've selected the wall, in selection, and the floor as well. This is going to help us keep off that floor. We're going to leave 20 thousandths on both walls and the floors. Now for guide curves, I've selected the upper rail here, and then I've selected the lower rail as well. Hit in selection. Now something that's really neat about this tool path is if we go to utility, we can transform or translate this tool path without making multiple operations. So I'm going to rotate this tool path three times at 120 degrees apart. We hit OK. You can see that now that I'm roughing all three blades on this one side. So now all we got to do is copy that tool path for this back side. So that's this last swarfing operation. We go into here, we can see that I've selected the back side of the blade. We hit end selection. I've also selected the floor on it as well. I've selected the upper and lower rail. And likewise, under utility, I'm copying it three times at 120 degrees apart. Hit OK. And now our part is complete. Now that the roughing is complete, all that would be left to do is to finish. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave me a comment below and let me know what you thought about this tool path. We'll see you all next time.